Our final differentiation rule is our quotient rule. And as the name implies, u on v, a quotient, we have a division, right? two distinct functions. And in this one, order is important. So our rule is for f dashed of x, or dy dx, it's the derivative of the top times the bottom function minus the derivative of the bottom function times the top over the bottom function squared. So order is important. Start with the top, top minus bottom over bottom squared. Okay. So again, let's have a bit of a look. U is equal to X, the top function. U dash is equal to one. V is equal to 2x minus 1 squared. So V dash. Now you might expand it and differentiate, but I'm going to use a chain rule, which means that 2 comes out the front from the power, 2x minus 1 to the power of 1, times the derivative of what's in the bracket, which is 2. So what does that leave me with? I've got two lots of 2 there, so I might leave it in the bracket of form 2 times 2x minus 4 times 2x minus 1. There's my other derivative. So I've got that. F dashed of x is equal to the derivative of the top times the bottom function. Minus the derivative of the bottom function. Times the top all over bottom function squared. So the bottom function is that. So if I'm going to square it because of the rule, I'm going to raise it to the power of 4. All right. So what have we got in the top? I've got a 2x minus 1 as a common factor there. So if I take that 2x minus 1 out the front, I've got left in the front half, I've got a 2x minus 1 left, subtract 4x all over 2x minus 1 to the power of 4, which is 2x minus 1. Actually, hopefully you can see that they cancel through it. So can we do that? So let's go about that. So here we've got our 2x minus 1 to the 4, so if I make that a 3, then I cancel out that 2x minus 1. I get left with 2x minus 1 minus 4x, which is minus 2x minus 1 over 2x minus 1 cubed. All right, find f dash of x, that's all we had to do. So there's our derivative there. Okay, B, same thing, find f dash to pi on 3 if f of x is equal to. Same process, isn't it? U, so don't forget that these rules are given on our formula sheet, so you've just got to remember how to apply them. Derivative of cos is minus sign. And if v is equal to x squared minus 1, v dash is equal to 2x. So f dash of x is equal to derivative of the top times the bottom minus derivative of the bottom oh, that should have been in blue shouldn't it times the top all over bottom squared okay so no real obvious things that we can take out as a common factor. And obviously, in these ones as well, because we're evaluating the derivative at a point, sometimes it's best just to leave it like that so we don't make any mistakes. So I just put it in. So negative sine pi on 3 times pi on 3 squared minus 1, 2 times pi on 3 pi on 3 times cos pi on 3 over pi on 3 squared minus 1 all squared. 
equals. So what is sine of 60 degrees? It's root 3 on 2, isn't it? So we get negative root 3 on 2. Nothing particularly nice, is it? Pi squared on 9 minus 1 minus 2 pi on 3 times cos of pi on 3, which is a half, over pi squared on 9 minus 1 all squared. Probably not the best example in reality, but let's try and tidy it up a little bit. So let's take a ninth out of those brackets there. Okay, so let's make it a negative root 3 on 2. I'm going to take a ninth out, which means in this bracket that becomes pi squared minus 9. And we get minus pi on 3 over, we'll do the same thing here, big bracket, uh, I'll take a ninth out the front, pi squared minus 9, all squared, so it becomes a 1 on 81 there. Let's multiply that term through, so we've got root 3 on 18, um, yeah, let's go on, so we'll go negative root 3 on 18, pi squared, uh, and that's going to then become a plus 9 root 3 on 18, which is going to be root 3 on 2, and then I've just got a minus pi on 3 over here. 1 ninth squared is 1 on 81. I squared minus 9, all squared. Running out of room here, lads. But we might as well finish it now that we're going. Let's flip that 81. So we're going to multiply and do that. Sorry. This 81 here, 1 on 81. Let's flip it upside down and multiply. So I've got 81 multiplying each of those terms on the numerator equal to, so what's 81 on 18? So 9 goes into both, that becomes 9 on 2. Okay, so let's go negative 9 root 3 on 2 pi squared plus 81 root 3 on 2 minus 81 on 3 is 27 pi. all over 5 squared minus 9 squared equal, we'll take a 9 on 2 at the front. So if I put a 9 at the front on a 2 on the bottom, I get negative root 3 pi squared. Um, we're going to go set up plus 9 root 3. Um, and that 27, well, if I take 9 out the front, it's a 3, but I'm going to bring a half out the front. That makes it a 6 pi over, what's that? 5 squared minus 9 squared. All right, let's check the cards and see how we went. So fortunately there, the, um, the final answers match off, so that's nice. They've just got an extra negative sign at the front. Look, let's just be really clear that it's not a great example because the hard part is clearly all this algebra. And it's good practice, um, don't get me wrong, but you certainly wouldn't get anything that involved in a tech-free sort of environment. But um, yeah, it's still, still good practice. So let's make our way back to the last example, uh, which is probably a little bit more typical. Find the grade, derivative of that, hence find the gradient of the curve at x equal to zero. So... It's nice that they've instructed you to find the derivative, but quite possibly they might just say find the gradient of the curve. So again, top function, derivative of the top function, derivative of sine is positive cos. I won't cover code this time. Bottom function, 2e to the x minus x, v dashed is equal to, what's the derivative of that? Well, e to the x is just e to the x. 
which means now my derivative, and I will just call it f dash of x, is equal to the derivative of the top times the bottom function minus the derivative of the bottom function times the top. Now you should put brackets around everything with that negative sign there in particular over the bottom function squared. Again, instead of trying to simplify things, I'm just going to put x equal to zero in there. And we know cos of zero is one. So I get one times e to the zero, two e to the zero, which is two minus zero, minus in bracket, e to the zero. Well, sine of zero is zero, so it's just going to be a zero on that last term over two e to the zero minus zero squared. So what's that give me? Two e to the zero is two, so I get two on the top over 2 squared on the bottom, which is a half. So there's the gradient of the curve. Therefore, should, probably should say gradient is equal to a half at x equal to 0. All right. So again, key skill, using our quotient rule, and then just using whichever application or requirement that we have after.